Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of Irongo Talk, our community, your news. Now my name is Leandria Lowe and I'll be your host for today. Now in today's program we are talking to Gerald Guter from the Swakopmund Football Club who's going to tell us about how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected them and what are their plans for the future. Additionally, we are also speaking to Claudia Lofty Eaton from Wolfish Bay who um, is hosting, or Ramos Realtors is hosting a Funk Up Your Mask competition. So she's going to talk about that. I'm also going to bring you the latest news as well as the weather and the tides because we can go fishing. <laughs> so please stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. And now for your news. Now we um, start off with some COVID-19 news once again. Now yesterday the minister announced nine new cases of COVID-19 in Namibia. Now last night at about just about se um, past seven, the Minister of Health and Social Services, Dr. Kalumbi Shangula, um, announced five cases and earlier in the morning he announced four cases. Now three of the four cases he announced the morning was um, from Quisap Mont Dwarfish Bay and then the five um, of yesterday evening was also from Quisabmont um, from Wolfish Bay and um, he um, explained the various cases where they arrived from and now the case number 64 arrived on 17 of June 2020 and traveled to Oshikango where he arrived on the 19th of June 2020. Now he is a truck driver from South Africa and now the um, the rest of the cases that stem from Wolfish Bay, um, two of these cases are contacts of case 35 and then the one case had no known contact with a COVID-19 positive case. Now this is the cases that he announced early in the morning yesterday and our last um, and in the cases in the evening um, was part of a batch that was analyzed um, on uh, Monday but could only be completed um, yesterday. So um, um, case number 68 is a 41 a year Namibian female. Um, female. Um, she had no known contact with a confirmed case. Case 69 has also had known contact with a confirmed case. Case 70 is a 59 year old female from Wolfish Bay. She is not known to have been in any contact with a confirmed case. And then um, case 71 is a Namibian female, a 42, 42 year old Namibian female from Wolfish Bay. She also had no known contact with a confirmed case. And then case number 72 is a 51 year old man from Wolfish Bay. He also had no known contact with a confirmed case and is part of an active case search. Now yesterday the, um, the governor of the Irongo region also had um, a media briefing and he explained that um, mess testing will be taking place in Wolfish Bay in various areas at the end of the day and he announced that um, this um, will start from today up until tomorrow. So um, at Sea Point, they are um, targeting to test about 268 people. Namport area of Quisapmont, 268. Tutaleni, 200 people. Tualaloka, 200 people. Kabayo, um 200 people. Quisapmont Center, which is now where we're at the Quisapmont um, Community Hall, um, also 200 people. And Naraval, at the Naraval Community Hall, they'll be testing 200 people. For the port in the town area, 100 people. The prison, 300 people. Utusep, that's about 60, 60 kilometers away from, from the Wolfish Bay District, they will be testing 64 people. So they're aiming to test about 2,000 people from Wolfish Bay alone. Now this testing will take place at um, various um, places in Wolfish Bay and it will start from today and will last up until the 27th of June. Now this is their way to try and curb the spread of the virus here in um, Wolfish Bay. Now the Irongo also spoke to the Minister of Health and Social Services, Dr. Kalumbi Shangula, yesterday and he said that the onus now rests on the individuals of Wolfish Bay to take care of themselves because at the end of the day, although we are in stage 3, he also clarified that Wolfish Bay, Arandas and Swakopmund falls under stage 3 like the rest of the, of the region. The only um, thing is we have special restrictions which applies to the traveling in and out of the towns as well as that no uh, more than 10 people should gather when there is a gathering. Now he said that we should take care of ourselves. Um, the alcohol sales also opened yesterday and he said if a person is intoxicated, you know, um, common sense is gets thrown out of the window at the end of the day. So please keep that in mind. Um, I know it's been a long while, but please keep that in mind. Um, when consuming alcohol, when you find yourselves in the company of other people, although we have freedom, 
we need to be responsible at the end of the day. Cases are spiking in Warfish Bay and it's definitely local transmission. We try, um, the ministry is still trying to figure out where exactly this is stemming from. But that just tells us that we need to be more careful at the end of the day. But please go check out our website at www.irongo.com.na and our Facebook pages for all the latest updates concerning COVID-19 and anything happening in the Irongo region. here with Gerald Gutter, the technical director at the Swakopmund Football Club, better known as SFC. Hi Gerald, how are you? Hi, good, thank you. So Gerald, lockdown came semi out of nowhere and knocked us all upside the head. Let's ask the golden question first. How did lockdown affect SFC? Uh, it affected us in uh, quite a few ways. We started training in February, uh, preparing for all the tournaments and the league games uh, coming up. Yeah, and then the lockdown came and it was all taken away and we haven't actually played football since. We've had um, sessions where lockdown was um, lifted to level 2 and level 3, where we kind of um, adjusted ourselves and our training regime mm -hmm. in order to comply with government rules and yes, regulations. Yes. Okay, <coughs> so there were quite a few events that were supposed to take place in these past couple of months that have obviously had to be cancelled or rescheduled. So which events were missing in these past couple of months? Well, we missed out on uh, the SKW Youth Tournament, uh, DTS Youth Tournament and the Ramblers Youth Tournament. Mm -hmm. um, the final youth tournament that should take place in the year is uh, at the end of September, which is ours here at SFC. And uh, we'll have to see how we can kind of implement everything and mm -hmm. uh, make sure that we get everyone involved mm -hmm. that lost out during the year and um, yes, yes. make up for lost time. Mm -hmm. So these events that were, that were skipped as a result of the lockdown, are they being rescheduled or will they be cancelled? Well, <coughs> I haven't had uh, direct contact with the other clubs yet. Um, I presume because of the time frame that we're working with and the kids having to catch up on schoolwork as as well. I don't think that uh, all the tournaments will be able to be rescheduled, um, mm -hmm. hence us uh, trying yes. to have a look at the end of September, our youth tournament, to make that a bigger event to kind yes. of make up for all the mm -hmm. lost time. So, um, obviously you've lost revenue from these events not being hosted. So how did the club keep itself afloat in the past couple of months? Um, I have to admit that um, we have quite a few parents that uh, showed a lot of solidarity and uh, we appreciate that a lot, mm -hmm. um, paying membership fees and so forth. Um, you know, and um, it is, yeah, it's, it's obviously a very huge financial strain on all of us and everyone mm -hmm. had to adjust. And, um, you know, this, it's no different with, with us. Mm -hmm. So, how did you manage with? players training apart from each other instead of as a team. You obviously couldn't manage things like getting team tactics and things like that drilled into the players. How did you manage keeping them fit individually? Yeah, we obviously had to adjust our training schedule. Um, during the first phase, uh, lockdown one, when everyone had to be at home, we sent the kids uh, videos on what they were supposed to do and uh, mm -hmm. sent them a training schedule. Uh, from Monday to Friday what they can mm -hmm. do. It's also very difficult you know to for a child to keep himself motivated if he doesn't have his friends and coaches around um, you know but a lot of them followed those scheduled and tried their best to to do as much as possible then during level uh, lockdown level two and three uh, we were able to host them but we kept individual training methods mm -hmm. um, 
we kept them a meter and a half apart. We made sure that everyone sanitized. Um, we didn't do any contact sports. We just worked mm -hmm. on individual skills, dribbling and shooting at goal, but we obviously made sure that there's no contact among the players. So we had to adjust, um, but I think that's all part of life. And um, as a coach, you should be able to kind of accommodate these kind of things and then make sure that we can keep on training. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Um, from the players' point of view, there's also a lot of self-motivation from their side that needs to come. And it's not easy because I also find it difficult to be self-motivated yes. at times because uh, I'm a person that likes team sports and stuff mm -hmm. like that, which is very nice to keep motivated. Yes, yes. So for the rest of the year, are there any other events that SFC is still waiting on? Well, <coughs> we're not waiting on anything, but uh, we are planning now to make sure that once level four comes into place and we are back to normal and we can do contact sports that we, uh, especially here in Zockermund, um, host a league uh, within mm -hmm. September, August, September. Um, to kind of make up for lost time. We also mm -hmm. need to take into consideration of all the schools. They also need to catch up. So we'll have to kind of uh, share our time with the schools and make sure that the uh, kids attend their schoolwork as much as they do their football. So we are hoping to have something going by August, September for the kids mm -hmm. here in Sokopmund and all the teams. And then, yeah, take it, take it from there. And like I said, at the end of September, the big... Uh, Swapo Moon tournament, youth tournament is supposed to take place and um, we hope that we can follow that through. Yes. So, when when people return to SFC, will there be any changes or will, will it be the same old SFC they've always known? Um, Character-wise, character I think there shouldn't be any changes. We'll obviously have to adjust, we'll have to make sure when the kids come in we sanitize, we'll make sure the kids come, come in with masks and, um, you know, try and um, educate them on this whole COVID and uh, cleansiness and all that, yeah. uh, all the important uh, elements. And then um, obviously, I think everyone in the whole world has to adjust and change slightly. I mean, yes. it won't be back to normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have to make sure that we adjust ourselves and then carry on with our targets set. Yes, yes. So, SFC, aside from COVID-19, has cultivated quite a few well-known players in past. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we were lucky enough to um, have over the years supply quite a few players to the Namibian Premier League. Um, and our biggest exports so far have been Dion Hotto, who is currently with uh, Bitwes Witz in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Lubeni Hal Congo, who is at Lille in France, mm -hmm. playing for the B team. But uh, there's a very good future for him to move into the first team. And um, our biggest aim is to give every player that plays here the opportunity to prepare himself yes. if the opportunity arises, yeah. um, that if he gets trials with a bigger team, that he is physically and mentally prepared. And we don't just focus simply on training on the field. It is also off the field training, making sure that his school works are up, up to date because a player that wants to achieve something also needs to be educated very well and uh, we, ca we look and make sure that the schoolwork also complies uh, with the same intensity that they give on the, on the field. Okay, thank you very much, Gerald. Thank you. Hey guys, it's Likius Nanda, Namibian Golfer 2018 Sports Star of the Year. Keep watching Aronga Talk, we'll be right back after this. Hi, my name is Claudia. I'm from Ramos Realtors Namibia. I'm going to talk to you today about a new competition that we've started. It's called Funk Up My Mask. The reason for the competition is because the Irongo region especially has been really hard hit with the constant lockdowns. My children started getting really down. They started getting depressed. And we associated the mask with a negative connotation. So we wanted to bring a bit of positivity, a bit of happiness, and a bit of brightness into the day. So Funk Up Your Mask basically is for you to get as crazy, as creative as you can be. Paint that mask, decorate it, let's do something exciting, something new. Those of you that have funked up your mask can send a WhatsApp to 081 292 
6746. The numbers with the most likes will be put into the final draw. We have amazing prizes. Prizes were sponsored by Avi's cell phone shop, a beautiful leather skirt, Express Service Station Wallfish Bay donated various cash prizes as well as fuel uh, prizes. Bay Self Catering gave us some uh, uh, Disney watches, sanitizing kids. Quentin Susi Lounge gave us some nice uh, pizza. Dermatherapy Room gave us some free massages. Bay Home Improvements gave us some kitty watches. So come along, join in the fun, be part of us, be part of making something positive. Together we can achieve, we can overcome this lockdown. Come on Namibia, come on Irongo region. I want us, the Irongo region, make us proud, win the prizes. Come on Irongo, we've got this. Ciao. Now for your tides and weather. Now, um, high tide was this morning at 15 minutes past 5. Low tide at 15 minutes past 11. High tide will be at 10 minutes to 6 this evening. And then low tide again at quarter to um, 12 later um, today. Now, Wolfish Bay sunrise was this morning at um, 17 minutes to 8. Sunset will be at 26 minutes past 6. The maximum temperature for today will be 28 degrees Celsius with a north northwesterly wind. And now for tomorrow, the minimum temperatures will be 14 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 22 degrees Celsius. Sokop Moon sunrise was um, this morning at 18 minutes to 8. Sunset will be at 27 minutes past 6. The maximum temperature for today will be 27 degrees Celsius with a northwesterly wind. And then the minimum for tomorrow will be 13 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be 21 degrees Celsius. Now Antis Bay, sunrise was also this morning at 18 minutes to 8. Sunset will be at 29 minutes past 6. The maximum temperature for today will be 28 degrees Celsius with a northwesterly wind. And then for tomorrow, the minimum will be 14 degrees Celsius with a maximum of 22 degrees Celsius. Now moving to Aranda, sunrise was this morning at 20 minutes to 8. Sunset will be at 26 minutes past 6. The maximum temperature for today will be 32 degrees Celsius with a northerly wind. And then for tomorrow, the minimum will be 9 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be 30 degrees Celsius. For Usakos, sunrise was this morning at 14 minutes to um, Eight. Sunset will be at 24 minutes past 6. The maximum temperature for today will be 29 degrees Celsius with a north northeasterly wind. And then the minimum for tomorrow will be 7 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be 28 degrees Celsius. Now in Karibab, sunrise was this morning um, at 25 minutes to 8. Sunset will be at 23 minutes past 6 this evening. The maximum temperature for today will be 27 degrees Celsius with a northeasterly wind. And then the minimum will be 6 degrees Celsius for tomorrow. And then the maximum will be 26 degrees Celsius. And then finally for Omaruru, sunrise was this morning at eight, um, 28 minutes to Eight. Sunset will be at 24 minutes past six. The maximum temperature for today will be 27 degrees Celsius with a north northeasterly wind. And then the minimum temperature for tomorrow will be five degrees Celsius and the maximum will be 26 degrees Celsius. Now, before we say goodbye, we had a Father's Day competition running the past weekend, and now um, Nilu Aludilu, who was our winner, she sent in the competition on behalf of her partner, Mike Ikanjo, and their baby, Adolf Ikanjo. Now, um, we're going to play you a short video, um, audio clip of um, how excited she is for winning this competition and why the Irongo newspaper is her favorite newspaper. And I'm feeling so good, more than good, so excited even. And Big Daddy, I'm also doing things which are bad for Big Daddy. I'm taking responsible for my son since day one up to now. And this due to COVID-19, I make sure he's staying home. I clean his head after playing or after eating or before eating. And about the Elongo newspaper, I'm ever following it. It's ever updating us news. Everything's what is happening in Elongo, the Elongo newspaper itself to update us. That's why 
I like them I'm not newspaper and I'm ever following it and I don't like missing news from Elongo newspaper and that's it for today's episode of Irongo Talk. We just want to give a huge shout out to Swakop Moon Waffle House for providing the stunning venue. Now, please um, don't forget to check out our website at www.irongo.com.na. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Drop us a new step or whatever the case may be. Say hello to us or just say good luck to 0811 7040. I'll repeat that again 0811 7040. So don't forget to check us out again tomorrow, 12 o'clock, same time, same place. And our colleague Adolf Kaure will be presenting tomorrow's show. So um, please remember to keep safe at all times, wear your mask, keep your social distancing, and always sanitize and wash your hands. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ciao.